After the departure of Vince Zampella, Jason West, and many of the Critical Infinity Ward staff, all eyes were on Treyarch. It wasn't really clear whether they'd fold under pressure or actually succeed. People thought without Zampella and West, Call of Duty would no longer be good. People also wondered whether Treyarch was going to continue the Modern Warfare saga from its cliffhanger ending, do another World War II game, or do a totally different time period. The answer surprised some. Not me, there, there, there were leaks, so I, I kind of knew. But this is Call of Duty Black Ops. Let's do this. All attention was put on Treyarch. If Black Ops wasn't good, then people would think that it was Weston Zampella's guiding hand that made Call of Duty good. But was Black Ops good? If you asked a lot of my friends at the time, yeah, they were saying, dude, totally. Finally, Treyarch actually made a good Call of Duty game that's as good as Infinity Ward. But I didn't really believe him. So that in mind, this is actually the first time I've actually played Black Ops. So you might be wondering, is it as good as people have been saying? No, no, not at all. But is it a good shooter at all? No, I, I just don't like it at all. At, at the very least. That's kind of weird because this is one of the more well-regarded Call of Duty games and this one tackles the 60s. So this one is themed around Cold War conflicts, the Bay of Pigs, Vietnam, and well, just other random locations. I mean, if you're here for non-stop action, then you probably enjoy the game. But for me, this game kind of lacks pacing in its game design. It, it doesn't really take a breath. And then when the game should be really ramping up in speed and tension, they throw in this mechanicals curveball that slows you down. In previous games, some of the more memorable parts were the parts th where the game just took a chill pill and let you walk around for a bit. But nope, not in this game, you just gotta go fast. This game really wants to be a movie so much that you've got to do anything exactly how the game really wants you to do it. And it's really annoying and very arbitrary at times. The mandatory stealth section took me forever to figure out how to get past because the dot is right there and they want you to stand right here. I, pff, I don't, and for some reason the guards just suddenly know exactly where you are. I didn't understand this. All this game is you're following this objective marker or commanding officer, but here it's just, it's at its very worst. It gets really dull because most of what you're doing, all of the gimmicky things from the previous games are dressed up, but they hardly feel like you're playing anything. Just point and click, point and click, point and click. That's all you do. That's this game gives you the illusion of that you have control of what's really going on. And if you're playing the game for the first time, it doesn't even tell you what to do that well. This one is one of the more those well-regarded COD games. And I just have to look at people and say, well, why? No, why? Seriously, why do you like this? Mechanically, there's very little difference. The newest thing here now is what I call the dolphin dive. If you're running and hit the crouch button, you perform this action movie dive that gotta hurt when you hit the pavement. I didn't really use it that often, but I mean, I guess it could help you get into cover. You got your usual assortment of assault rifles and pistols and whatnot, but it seems that they're really stretching for some of these weapon customizations. One of them is literally two magazines duct taped together. Intel are the pickups in this one, but they really don't do anything at all but unlocks documents in this computer, which makes one wonder <laughs> who's the guy looking through the rich deep backstory of a Call of Duty game. You think in a game called Black Ops that you'll be doing some really stealthy, sneaky stuff? but no, not at all, actually. This is one of the most action-packed Call of Duty games, and I have to ask why. Take the first mission. You're in this bar and some guards question you, and then you kill them for no, I mean, like, why? Were you guys just expecting not to get interrogated at all? I mean, how did 
two of the whitest guys in Cuba get to this point right here in this bar without being interrogated. I know that the bartender is on your side, but seriously, it, it could have been a moment where you, you, you know, you just talk to the guys and show some poor documentation and then skedaddle and then snuck into Castro's place and actually had been actually interesting. But no, uh, and a lot of these uh, crashes and explosions in this game are some of the most improbable to survive in the series. I mean, I've held my disbeliefs before, but this one is pretty bad. <laughs> Where are all the cool James Bond-esque gadgets? All the cool toys here are just really different ways for you to just point and click. There, there's nothing new, nothing new, unique. It's punctuated by Treyarch's usual lack of polish and just poor level design. That are just no fun to just keep dying from random guys that you have no chance to shoot back at. Sometimes the language is censored in the subtitles, but not in the cutscene, they, they just say the word. No. And sometimes the same exact word shows up in the subtitles not centered at all. If that doesn't show a lack of polish, I don't know what else does. The plot here is way too hokey for me to be even taken seriously, but the plot is played so straight. So when this guy shows up, I just burst out laughing. I don't even know if the guy doing the VO is doing a impersonation of JFK or an impersonation of a person doing an impersonation of JFK, if that made sense, but very poorly. Many people praise the plot, but I just don't really care for it at all. Really, the face tech actually looks good though. I have to give praise somewhere, but the facial animations actually do look good. But those thrillers that this game is trying to draw from, it they had downtime where you actually got real character development. I just really didn't care about the, our main character. He's just a generic protagonist 2.0. Yeah, you you don't get character development in the other games, but they, they didn't center the game around one guy and make the whole game about him. The, the twist here wasn't really shocking for me. I already knew something weird was going on in that department. This is also the first game, or second if you count, <laughs> that actually have these sparringly used Hollywood-like cutscenes, which are things that I can't really get it behind in a Call of Duty game. For me, just keep keep the keep the camera in the eyes of the player. The player is always the can't. Mm. I do have to say that having number stations being a motif in this game is an interesting touch. It could have been more well developed or something, but it where it isn't really explored in any meaningful way. It's kind of like a MacGuffin. To, to me, the real meat of this game is in the other three modes. Four, if you count Zork that's on a computer. But, I mean, it's a, it's kind of an easter egg. I mean, who's gonna... It's not a keep... You don't have a keep... Zombies, Dead Ops Arcade, and Multiplayer. So now, the zombies have proved himself to be very popular. A more fleshed out vanilla zombies is here. The zombies mode now has some semblance of a plot, and there are two maps. In Kino der Toten, you play as this Nazi zombie killing squad sent back in time to kill zombies, I guess? I don't know. In 5, that's, that's the name of the map. I guess. Uh, in 5, you play a JFK, Fidel Castro, Robert McNamara, and Richard Nixon, depending the Pentagon from Zombies. Yeah, that's something I just said. Oh my gosh. The basic gameplay loop is you shoot zombies and uh, board up walls to get points. Use said points to open up doors, buy guns, and special perks. There are some other gimmicks here. There's a mystery box that is also the cheapest way to get good guns. It's just a random shot, and sometimes you get something really dumb like a sniper rifle or an RPG, but most of the time you get something de decent. Uh, you also have to put on the power to access certain items, and there's these teleport machines, and there's also this weird doctor that steals your gun and- <laughs> Oh my god, I don't- I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> It's just a thing. I it's just a thing. I I play sometimes, but I I actually prefer simpler horde modes. So I actually like World at War's vanilla zombie mode over this pretty much. But I do recognize that this one has way more content and is just more varied. Also, there is Dead Ops Arcade, which is this pretty cool twin stick shooter. So there you have it. Black Ops is overrated. You might not like it. Might not like my opinion. You might like the game itself. It's just bad in my opinion. I wouldn't play it again. The the campaign at least. But hey, you could judge it for yourself. And if you like it, hey, just let me know. Why? So, Black Ops sold gangbusters, which was kind of surprising. Call of Duty always sold more every sequential year, but Treyarch's and Quiches wasn't as much as Infinity Ward had made each time. It was actually really surprising when Black Ops sold 5.6 million units in the first 24 hours in the US and UK alone. The game would go on to sell 26... 0.2 million copies. Trek had proved that Call of Duty could be successful without Weston Zempella. But what was next for the ashes of what was the well-regarded Infinity Ward? Well, things were, well, silent for a very long time, until a certain news site published some leaks. 